Yu Mei Lang, we will be doing question two, which is company financial statements. We've got information relating to Lamola Limited. Uh, Lamola Limited is a South African listed company that specializes in food and drink sector. They have an authorized share capital of 5 million ordinary shares. Lamula Limited has recently undergone a massive expansion regarding the number of retail outlets that they own. That 5 million ordinary shares, I will actually take it straight to my ordinary share capital note. If I've been asked ordinary share capital note, you take it straight there and you will write it there as authorized share capital. It has been written for you, so there's no point of actually writing it there. Let's continue reading. Then they gave you the profit markup. Okay, they said the profit markup is 100%. Highlight that because it's very, very important. Highlight that. It's 100% on cost. And they gave you the latest financial year is the 28th of February, 2022. Now we've got extracted balances from the pre-adjustment trial balance for the year ended 28th February 2022. They gave us ordinary share capital, which is 23,800. I will again take that to my ordinary share capital and I will put it there as ordinary shares at the beginning of the year because they gave you a date, which was 1 March 2021. So it was already entered for you. And... Um, let me see if they entered retained income as well. We were given retained income there, and our retained income amounted to, on the 1st of March 2021, it amounted to 6580000 And I'm going to go to my retained income note to see if that has been entered already. It looks like it has been entered as well. Then we've got trading stock. We can't use that for now. We've got debtors control. That amount of um, 8,532,000. Okay, why do we have trading stock and debtors control with the same amount? Um, so debtors control will be 5,125,400. We've got provision for bad debts, which is 96,000. And income tax amounting to 1,462,000 is on the David side. Now, sales income tax on the David side, those will be provisional payments. Then we've got creators control of 9,659,000. Provisional payments, we wouldn't record them anyway. However, um, our debtors control amount will record it in trade and other receivables. Now let us take it to trade and other receivables. We'll record it there as 5,126,400 and our provision for bad debts will be 96,000. So we'll put it there in brackets. So they have been written for you. You don't need to do all of those stuff. Okay, um, let's move right along to additional information. Now we've got transactions involving shares, dividends, and taxation that have been recorded. Now on the 1st of March, they gave us outstanding. They said no amount are outstanding to sales for income tax purposes. So this confirms that that amount we have of 1 million and something for sales income tax, those shall be our provisional payments towards SARS. And then on the 31st of May, 2021, it says that no changes have been made to the share capital since the end of last year. Interesting. So it means that since the end of last year, there were no shares issued. Um, there were no shares bought back up to the 31st of May. However, on the 31st of May, the company paid a total of 560000 as the interim dividend, which is $0.16 cents per share. Hmm. And remember, they said no changes have been made to the share capital since the end of last year. So it means that whatever they took as a number of shares and they multiplied it by 16 cents and it gave them 560, 560,000 is the same amount that they had, is the same number of shares that they had 
at the beginning of the year. But I will take that 560000 and take it straight to my retained income as dividends paid, which is your interim dividends. Don't waste any time. Okay. And then I will go back and look at this thing that they're talking about, which is the issuing of shares. All right. Now, this is what you need to know. Interim dividends will be equal to number of shares that were issued. We're going to multiply them by, um, okay, I don't know why I didn't start with it. We're going to multiply them by 16 cents. We don't know how many shares we issued, but we know that if we take those shares and we multiply them by 16 cents, we will get that 560,000. I will repeat that again. You are going to take your interim dividends multiplied by the number of shares issued. And obviously your interim dividend will be equal to the number of shares issued. Interim dividend will be equal to the number of shares issued multiplied by dividends per share. And we don't have the number of shares issued. We do, however, have our interim dividends. Our interim dividends will be um, that 560,000 and number of shares issued will just be number of shares issued, but dividends price per share will be 16 cents. Now divide both the sides by that 16 cents to get Now you will notice that 3.5 million is the same number of shares that were issued at the beginning of the year, all right? So all I did, I simply took my interim dividends and I divided that by 16% or 0 0.16 or 16 cents. And it gave me 3.5 million. 3.5 million, those were number of shares that were issued were in issue as at the 31st of May, 2021. And these shares will be exactly the same as the number of shares that were issued on the 1st of March, because they told you that nothing happened from the beginning of the financial year or from the end of last year. Now we've got um, 3,500,000 as the number of shares that will have been issued at the beginning of the financial year. Two marks for that. All right, so we've got that. Done. Let's go to the next one. And then on the 31st of August, we issued 700,000 shares at 11 rand. Oh, that is quite easy. You will take that 700,000 and multiply it by 11 rand. That will be recorded in our ordinary share capital. Now go to your ordinary share capital and just take 700,000 times it by 11. It will give you 7,700,000. One mark. On the 31st of January, the company bought back 100,000 shares at 10 rand 50 from the estate of a deceased shareholder. Note that that 10 rand 50 is the buyback price. Whatever you need to record in your ordinary share capital must be the average price per share. And how do we record? How do we calculate the average price per share? Average price per share will simply be share capital at the beginning of the year plus share capital of any shares that were issued before the buyback divided by the number of shares. Number of shares at the beginning of the year were 3.5 million. Number of shares that we issued during the year amounted to 700,000. Now it's your share capital divided by the number of shares issued. And this is all before the buyback. And that will give you average price per share of 750. That will be what we call average price, which is shares repurchased at 7 rent 50. You will take 100,000, multiply by 750, it will give you 750,000. You put it in brackets because that is the buyback. Now, when you look at the number of shares, take that 3.5 million, add it with 700,000 minus 100,000, you will get 4.1 
million, which is 4,100,000. And for your share capital at the end of the year, you will get 30,750,000. Okay. Now, that buyback also affects something, but I'm going to start with profit after tax, which according to the workbook, it was already given to you in your statement of profit or loss. So our profit after tax was that 3,075,800. We will take that and record it in our retained income as profit after tax. Then we're going to put in loss or profit due to buyback. Now, question is, are we going to have a loss or a profit due to buyback according to the information that we have? According to the information we have, the buyback price was 10 rand 50, right? And our average price per share that we calculated was 7 rand 50, correct? So your buyback price is more than your average price per share. If your buyback price is more than your average price per share, we call it a loss due to buyback. The difference will be a loss due to buyback. You will multiply the difference between those two values with that 100,000. 100,000 multiplied by 10,5 minus 7,5. That will give you 300,000. We put it in brackets because it's a loss due to buyback. Please don't make a mistake of recording loss due to buyback in your income statement, i.e. the statement of profit or loss. It only is a transaction between the business and the owner. Any transaction between the business and the owner goes to retail income. I hope we're together. On the 28th of February, a final dividend of 21 cents per share was declared on the shares in issue. So now we're going to check how many shares were in issue on the 28th of February. According to this, on the 28th of February, we had issued 4,100,000 shares. You will take that 4,100,000 shares and use it to calculate your final dividends. So your final dividends will be 4,100,000 times it by 21 cents, and that will be 861,000. At 861,000 with 560,000, that will give you um, ordinary share dividends and that will amount to 1,421,000, put it in brackets. But at the same time, the final dividend, we are going to record it in trade and other payables as shareholders for dividends. So we'll put that as a current liability in the current financial year. And we're going to put it there as shareholders for dividends. And that is it when it comes to your ordinary share capital node as well as your um, retained income. Okay. Um, just look at all the adjustments. I'm going to show you the adjustments. So this is the first part of the adjustments. And this will be the second part of the adjustments. Use that to prepare this. And that part of your statement of profit or loss. And this part here. That part. I jumped something there. That part. and trade in other payables. We have done our retained income. We've also done our ordinary share capital note. Okay, um, check out the next video as we continue with financial statements. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe. If you have any questions, please ask. 
you can email me or just put um, write your question under the comment section. Awesome.